Hey YouTube, how you going? Last video I did was on wearing a GPS watch or at the very least a form of watch. Um, this video I want to talk about nutrition. Uh, funnily enough, they do link into one another. One of the main reasons why I said you need a watch is so that you know the time and how often and when you should be eating. Um, it's all very well and good to guess, but if you are aiming to run um, or at least maintain a fast speed uh, or a consistent speed, for the full 24 hours you are going to need to eat. There's no two ways about it. When I went um, last year, I overcompensated hugely with the amount of food that I had, um, but it was kind of my first endurance event, and the benefit of that was that I had lots of different things to eat, so I didn't really get bored. I had some dates, I had some um, fruit squeezies that's like kind of baby food. I know it sounds weird, but it's just a few fruit puree, lots of calories, I had energy gels, the standard ones, some cranberries uh, as well, and some dried mango. Scrap the dried mango though, it's, it was too tough to chew, everything else worked a treat, um, but again, still too many calories per hour, but I figured that out throughout the race and at least I had variety. Um, on to the purpose of this video. Uh, 24 hours is a long time, is, you know, to run. Um, so if you're going to be doing that, you're going to deplete your glycogen stores in your muscles and your liver. Typically, most people have around two, two and a half hours worth of uh, stored energy. After that, you need to replace it. But because it's a 24-hour event, you literally start replacing you know, from the get-go so that you don't use it all up and then go, shit, I need to eat. You've got to be eating consistently. Just watch any uh, endurance event like the Tour de France, Ironmans, that kind of thing. They eat during the event. Um, so in order to eat, you need to know when to eat. That is a highly individual thing. Um, and since having a running coach, I've kind of worked out that for me, I need to eat every half an hour. And in a simple running race uh, or ultra marathon, that was only one gel every half an hour. Um, for you, it might be a little bit more. I don't think it would be less because I am kind of at the low end of the spectrum. Um, so it, it could be two gels, it could be three gels. Um, and you might want to mix that up. Maybe you have one gel on the 20 minute mark, at the 40 minute mark you have something different. Maybe it's a liquid based um, you know, energy drink or something like that. And then on the, you know, the hour mark it's something different or it goes back to the gel. But in order to eat on those intervals, you need to know the time. So get a watch. If it's not a Garmin, just a sports watch. So at least you roughly know, okay, it's 20 minutes, I need to eat. Um, as I said, what are the options um, You know, in terms of eating? The big thing I think I learned as well with, you know, I thought um, having like some dried fruit and stuff, it worked really well. No problem about it in terms of energy, but you got to remember, whatever you eat does come out eventually. So... It is probably better in a way if you have more refined stuff um, because it goes through the digestive system a little bit slower. Um, or if it's like a liquid or an energy gel, you know, it, there's not really mass to it, if you know what I mean. Like if you eat a heap of dates, there's fiber and stuff that has to go out. <coughs> um, whereas the gels, they're just pure sugar, so it gets absorbed into the blood absorbed into the bloodstream and you can use it as energy same with like the liquid drinks and all that kind of stuff so if i if um to prepare again i would use energy gels predominantly or a liquid based you know more drink style uh and maybe supplement that with like i said one of those fruit uh puree type options just to give your taste buds a bit of a change mix it up that kind of thing Back at the tent, you could have a banana, some dried fruit, something like that, again, just to mix it up, but don't rely on that as your sole source of energy. Um, having them as liquid as well, obviously, means you can get it down quicker. Uh, those energy gels I use are called Science in Sport. They're a little bit bigger, and that's because they've got a little bit more water in them themselves, so you can actually kind of squeeze it and drink it. Some of the other goos are literally really, really gooey, and you need to consume those with water, otherwise they'll give you digestive issues. Problem with that is, you might need to eat an energy gel on the 20 minute mark, but there's no water station around. So what the hell are you gonna do? Are you gonna carry a hydration backpack? I did that last year. If you're aiming to be fast, maybe it's not the best strategy, as I'll discuss in one of my later videos. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. That way, if you have something like a science and sport energy gel that doesn't require water, you're much better off. 
The biggest mistake I saw in terms of nutrition amongst most people was they left too long between eating. My issue obviously was that I had too, I overcompensated for food, but at least in that instance, that's something I have a choice then. If I've got you know, 350 or 400 calories worth of food and I only needed 250, well, I can just eat 250. If you don't have any food, you can't eat anything. Uh, and there was a lot of people who thought they would do, the, you know, the full lap, then eat. Full lap, then eat. Full lap, then eat. Most people, you know, that was two hours, three hours, three and a half hours, depending on how much they slowed down between eating. And you just can't survive. You're going to run out of energy. Also, if you aren't eating uh, enough, obviously, um, you know, it, it's going to have flow-on effects not only for your speed, you might start feeling the cold a little bit more, you're less focused, um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just going to make it that much difficult, that much more difficult to finish the event. Um, so they're my top tips. In summary, uh, energy gels, liquid-based, uh, is probably best. In your tent, you can have something like jam sandwiches, um, bananas, some dried fruit, just to give your taste buds a bit of a change. You need a watch or a GPS watch, something at least to tell you the time so you know how to eat consistently. And also, I guess number four would be try it in training over and over and over again. Don't want to get there and never have eaten these things before because you don't know how your body will react. They're my tips, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I want to help you out. As I say over and over again, as much as possible, share my experience from World's Toughest Mudder 2012, help you earn one of these t-shirts, and have a good event. Thanks for watching, and talk soon.